we are now at the end, literally at the end of the digestive system as we discuss the structures of the large intestine. This image is very similar to one in your textbook and lab manual showing the large intestine. The large intestine includes the alimentary canal starting from the ileocecal valve extending all the way to the anus. Okay, so all of this is large intestine. The large intestine includes the following, the cecum, the appendix, the ascending, transverse, and descending colons, the sigmoid colon. Sigmoid means S-shaped. Notice the sigmoid colon is S-shaped. The rectum, the anal canal, which connects the rectum to the anus, which is the opening through which feces passes from the large intestine to the outside world. Notice that large intestine and colon are not synonymous terms. Most of the large intestine is colon, but there are structures that make up the large intestine that are not part of the colon. So large intestine does not equal colon. One other structure I'd like to point out are these hostra. These are the pocket-like structures of the large intestine, which make, which are very characteristic of the large intestine. Typically, that's what students recognize uh, when they are identifying the large intestine. They're formed by the contraction of these smooth muscles, this band of smooth muscles here called the tinea coli, which are not on your study guide. You don't have to know them, but when they contract, they cause the formation of these pockets. So if I asked you to identify the pocket, tinea coli is what I'm looking for. Let's now look at the large intestine on the torso model. You're looking at the torso model here. We're going to zero in on the abdominal region. Here's the abdominal region of the torso model. You can see some of the ascending colon here, transverse colon, a portion of the descending colon, but a lot of it is obscured by the small intestine here. So in this next slide, we're going to look at this same model with the small intestine removed. And we're also going to remove the transverse colon. Now we can see much more of the large intestine, which we have the small intestine removed. This is the terminal end of the ileum, so this would be the cecum here. You can't see the ileocecal valve because it's deep, but in the next model, this, uh, this portion of the cecum is going to be removed, so you'll be looking at a dissected frontal section of the cecum, and you'll be able to see the ileocecal valve. But this is the cecum, this is the ascending colon, the transverse colon has been removed, but it would be here. This is the descending colon, and this is the sigmoid colon. In this particular model, when you remove the small intestine, it takes the colon and the anal canal with it. So we won't see that in this model, but we will on the next model we're going to uh, observe. First, I apologize for the graininess of this image, although I think you can still very easily identify the structures of the large intestine. Here's that vermiform appendix. This is the end of the ileum, the terminal end of the ileum. So this is the ileocecal valve. This is the ileum, this is the cecum, this is the valve that controls the flow of substances from the ileum to the cecum, thus named the ileocecal valve. Ascending colon, transverse colon, 
descending colon. Can't really see the sigmoid colon, but it's back here. But what you can see is the rectum here running from here to here. And then you have the anal canal and, of course, the anus. Also, again, these pockets are the hostra.